Such a beautiful, fresh morning. <laughs> right to the business of the day. Oh, how forgetful of me. Ah, there we are. Well, if it isn't the brave commander. <laughs> how are you this fine morning? Did you sleep well? <laughs> no. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Was the, um, brandy. <laughs> the noise from the revelers last night. Or perhaps was it the ropes cutting into your wrists? <laughs> what was that? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to take that gag out of your mouth? Well, only if you promise to be good. <laughs> there we are. Now. Ah, ah, Commander. Such foul language from one so refined. There's no need for that. <laughs> and do stop struggling, will you? It really is just easier if you cooperate. Of course, if you had done that in the first place, we wouldn't be in this unfortunate situation. <laughs> so just settle down, now. Good. <laughs> Not quite so confident without your trusty sword by your side, are you? Oh, if the troops could see you now, Commander. If they could see their fine, upstanding leader, so restrained and helpless, would they pity you, I wonder? Would your beloved reputation be in shreds? <laughs> oh, don't try to give me that defiant look. Don't you remember? Our little meeting last night was a secret. You were under strict instructions to tell no one, which I have no doubt you followed to the letter, being such a hopelessly trusting individual. <laughs> so, no one knows you're here. <laughs> and even when someone eventually realizes that you're missing, this is absolutely the last place they'd expect you to be found. So, I'm afraid, Commander, you are just going to have to face the fact that you are totally and utterly at my mercy. <laughs> anyway, you have only yourself to blame. Because of your idiotic and stubborn loyalty to your decrepit old king, you have left me in rather a tricky situation, and I'm sure you will appreciate that I don't very much like my plans to be derailed by such trifling details as a mere soldier who will not obey the simplest of my commands. But... I have given this little problem some thought, and I have come upon a most ingenious solution. You see, Commander, it occurred to me that you are exactly the means with which I can enact my plan, and I've got you precisely where I need you. Oh, it came to me in a flash, last night in fact. While you were indisposed, <laughs> I realized that all it would take to depose that wretch of a king would be for some well-placed missives to be sent to some influential advisors. Missives proven to be genuine and directly from the hand of the undoubtedly loyal yet discreet leader of the king's armies. Oh, that's you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
These messages would detail several worrying occurrences that have been observed by the brave defender of the land and, of course, of their recent campaigns. And that, with a heavy heart, of course, you must dutifully report that these events were all triggered by some recent unfortunate decisions by the monarch. A battle lost there, a stretch of land gained by the enemy here, perhaps even more spies captured by having their identities revealed accidentally by the forgetful old fool. I'm sure you know the type of thing. The advisors, knowing your utterly unsullied reputation for honesty, will be sure to act on this classified knowledge. And thus, the outsting of that waste of a crown will commence. <laughs> oh, don't bother to protest. After all, you have no choice in the matter. <laughs> you will write those letters, and you will do so with pleasure. Mainly my pleasure. What's more, you will also include several passages expressing the view that in your considered opinion the most suitable person for the role of Lord Protector will be the Grand Duke Menaris himself. Yes, you can truly go to town on that bit. Something like he is best positioned to step in due to his courtly knowledge and diligent attention to the affairs of state, etc., etc. <laughs> I'm not averse to a little flattery, in the right circumstances. <laughs> of course, once written, the letters will be sent to a roundabout way, through a series of different messengers we wouldn't want anyone realizing that they actually come from here now, would we? So, do you like my plan? It's so simple, isn't it? Yet so brilliant. <laughs> A scheme surely worthy of my most ruthless ancestor. Oh, I shall outdo him yet. <laughs> and do you know what the best part is? Oh, I don't have to lift a finger. You and your messages will do all the work for me. So, it's settled, is it not? Hmm. I thought you might still try to hang on to your so-called moral high ground. <sighs> Such a pity. Still... I like to plan for every eventuality, so I have brought along some tools which might enable me to change your mind. Ah, this takes me back to my youth. <laughs> oh yes, in my younger days, before taking over the dukedom from my father, I dabbled as a ship surgeon for a time. Ah, oh, yes, it was one of those reckless exploits that one gets into when one is fresh and ready for adventure. Most people find it a little difficult to stomach, <laughs> but I found that I was very suited to it. <laughs> very suited indeed. <laughs> oh, come now. The word sadist is a little strong, don't you think? I was a medical professional working under very difficult conditions. I'm sure you are aware of the hardships of the seafaring life, especially the terrible injuries which can befall sailors in the heat of a battle. It was not my own choice to inflict such discomfort. <laughs> I was merely forced by circumstance to work without the aid of anesthetics. Yes, I can still hear the screams to this day. Hmm, anyway. 
I must admit, I have a number of implements here to choose from. <sighs> now this one, this one is a particularly fine example. There. What beauty this is. Oh, but how embarrassing. It appears I have forgotten to clean this one after last time. Here, can you see the redness? Here, on the blade. Oh, come now, Commander. Surely as a soldier you are used to the sight of a little blood? Though, presumably, you would prefer that it wasn't your own. <laughs> Kill you. Oh, you underestimate me, Commander. I would never do anything as crass and artless as simple murder. No, no. The threat of death is not as great a motivator as most people believe. It tends to have rather terminal effects, if you will. <laughs> but the threat of pain, on the other hand, well, that can be an extremely effective method of persuasion. <laughs> you know, I have to admit, you're holding up rather too well. Usually, at this point, most of my interlocutors would acquiesce to any demands. But not you. You seem too calm. And why are you smiling, Commander? Is there something amusing to you in the situation? <sighs> There's that pig-headed defiance of yours again. I can see you are even more stubborn than I anticipated. So you are telling me that you are willing to undergo any amount of suffering to protect your king? What a fool you are! You truly are testing my patience now. However... Whilst you may have no difficulty putting yourself in danger for your principles, yet what of the safety of those you care about? The villagers and the townspeople, for example. Those simple commoners with whom you insist on fraternizing. The ones who treat you as one of their own who look up to you for friendship and support in difficult times. It would be such a shame for any unpleasant accidents to befall them, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't know, destruction of their crops, a fire among their houses, or armed mercenaries descending in the dead of night. Ah, and their friend, the commander, is nowhere to be seen. They so trusted you to defend them in their hour of need, but, oh, you abandoned them, left them to their desperate fate. <laughs> Getting nervous all of a sudden, commander. Oh, don't doubt that I could do all of those things and more. I have many associates in the shadowy parts of the city that are, shall we say, unburdened by ethics, if one states the right price. <laughs> ah, it seems I've finally found your weakness. How interesting. It's about time you learned that your own bravery alone can only take you so far. So, I will ask you one more time. The letters, yes? <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased that you have finally come to your senses. 
You see what a little persuasion can do? <laughs> Evil. Oh, don't be so coy, Commander. You must tell me what you really think of me. <laughs> hmm. So it is settled. You will be released from your shackles in due time. <laughs> But you will remain locked in this room under supervision. I will arrange for the necessary materials to be brought to you. You will write the letters in your finest handwriting. Of course, I will check on them carefully to make sure that they convey exactly what I have instructed and nothing more. <laughs> then they will be sent out and the machine will be set into motion. Oh, what a wonderful day this is turning out to be. And you never know, Commander. When this is all, and I'm finally Lord Protector, maybe I'll even let you live. Ha 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 